Now I'm going to show you how to chain piece a nine patch. But if you notice this time, we have four rust colored squares, four turquoise colored squares, and we fussy cut a little star in the center. Because of this fussy cutting, we are not going to be able to sew strips together and cut those out in a strip piece technique that you're all probably familiar with. Because of this, we had to cut everything into two and a half inch squares. But to do this and have that flower in the center adds extra interest to the block and it only takes about five extra minutes. So I'm going to show you how you get that flower centered right in the middle of that block. With the Creative Grids Square It Up and Fussy Cut Ruler, there are holes drilled through the ruler a quarter of an inch away from every square. So in this particular case, we're making a six and a half inch nine patch, so we need to cut two and a half inch squares. So I am going to find a flower that I like and center it within that two inch square. It's usually easier to mark on the wrong side of the fabric because there is not as much ink in the dyeing process and so it's easier to see your marks. So right now I'm going to take and center a flower right in that two, two inch square and then I'm going to take a marking pen, a water soluble marker, whatever you want to use. I normally would not use a black ink pen. The only reason I am is so you can see it on camera. So I will take it and mark through the holes which are drilled a quarter of an inch away from this center square and then when I pull that apart you can see the corners. This is a two and a half inch square. So I will take the ruler pull it down so there's my three black marks here and my third black mark is going to fall right in that hole so I know I'm square. I'm going to cut two sides of the block. Turn it around and I'm just going to fold that out of the way and now here's where I had it before this diagonal line is going to go right to that corner and the tip of the ruler is on that circle. This is right on that point, so I know I have a perfect two and a half inch square. And my flower is centered right in the center. That's exactly what I wanted. If you'll notice, these prints have a directional element to them. In the rust fabric, there are wavy lines that I've placed them so they all go horizontal. In this one, there are vertical lines, so I have them all going in the same direction. Because in my finished block, I don't want to have them turned, and I want them all to look like they're going in the same direction, so it'll be a more pleasing element and everything will be balanced. To chain piece this, I'm going to take them and put the fabrics right sides together, taking the second column and placing it right sides together over the first column. Now I'm going to pick these up from the top. So there's a little gap in here, so I pick them up in the right order from the sewing machine. And then I'm going to start picking them up from the top here. Now this is my entire block and I've chained it together. I can do this to put entire quilts together. And this time, I'm going to put a pin in it. The pin, the sharp edge of the pin is on the side of the block I need to sew. And I'm going to pick these up and chain them together, sewing the first two together, then the next two, and the next two. And once I have those three together, then I will add these to the side, and I'll have three rows of three blocks. So I'm going to go, show, or I'm going to go sew them now and show you how it works. Now you can see by chaining them that I have three rows of three blocks and they're all held together by a little thread. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to take them to the ironing board and this time I am going to press the fabrics towards the dark fabric because most of you are used to doing that in traditional quilting and I want to show you how easy it is to butt your seams if you do it at this point. So I'm going to go press these towards the rust fabric this towards the center and these towards the outside and show you how simple it is to line up your seams. Now you can see that since I press these seams towards the dark fabric, they are automatically ready to place right sides together and butt those seams so everything is accurate and my seams are nested. So 
they will match when I sew it together. Now remember those little threads between the block? We are going to leave those there right now because by leaving them there, I know that is the side that I need to sew. So I need to sew these two seams. And again, I'm going to put a little dab of glue on each of these seams because I want to take this and place it and make sure it doesn't shift during sewing. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side after I sew this seam. And see, this is still open, so I know this is the seam I need to sew. Just in case I forget, I'm going to put my pin in there so the sharp end of the pin is towards the sewn seam. Now that I've sewn that seam, you can see, because I put that dab of glue there, that these points match perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Put a little bit of glue there and place this over there and make sure that my seams are exactly where they need to be. And now I'm going to put a pin in so it is pointing towards the seam I need to do so I don't even have to think about it. And I'm going to go sew that seam. Now when that I, I open this up, all four of my seams match perfectly. I can go and press this it doesn't matter if I press both of these seams out or both of them in, as long as I'm consistent. I wouldn't want to press them both in the same direction because then they become noticeable on the other side and they look like speed bumps. So press them both in or both out and you'll have a perfect nine patch. You can use the same chaining technique to put together an entire quilt top and line up all your blocks and your sashing strips the same way. And so you only have to pick up the blocks once and by putting the pin in, you know exactly where you need to sew. And by the time you're done with that whole system, you can check your whole quilt because you have the rows and you know when you have only done 50% of the sewing that everything is exactly where you need it to be. And so do that part of the sewing in the day when you're not tired. And then in the evening, when you're sewing the other seams, that is mindless sewing because you know everything is, is perfect. Everything is held together by those threads. And so it is pretty hard to make a mistake at that point. So when you're, you know, it's later in the evening, you're getting a little tired, go ahead and sew the other seams because that 50% you don't even have to think about. So I'm going to go press those seams just so you can see how the finished block will look. As you can see, all of the points match perfectly in the center. Our flower is centered and fussy cut. The directional prints are all going in the right direction and we have a beautiful nine patch block. So enjoy.